this conflict is extremely complicated and it's difficult to explain to people exactly what is happening. Let's uh, cross live now to someone who I think can help with all the questions that people have been searching for online and indeed sending us here at the BBC. Our Middle East editor, Sebastian Usher, is in the newsroom. Very, very, very ready, as always, to help with uh, questions, Sebastian. And I suppose that the first question that uh, we need to ask you is why is this happening at this moment in time? Well, I mean, there are quite regularly eruptions in the conflict, specifically between Hamas, which controls Gaza and Israel. The last one we saw was back in 2021. The last really big uh, uh, confrontation was in 2014, but there have been a number of wars that have taken place uh, since Hamas took control of Gaza in 2007 and, and Israel uh, imposed a blockade which has held ever since. So those tensions are always there. In the past, we have usually seen uh, the conflict, although it's had terrible consequences in the numbers of people killed, particularly in Gaza from the airstrikes that uh, Israel launches in response to rockets being fired by Hamas. Uh, but th it, it, it's been within a certain kind of lines that both sides seem to accept that they don't cross in order to take it into you know, uncharted territory. What we've seen this time is that those lines have been crossed. Those lines were crossed essentially when Hamas uh, fighters infiltrated into Israel and caused, I mean, the worst uh, uh, incident uh, for Israel pretty much since its inception with hundreds. I mean, at the moment, we're saying at least 700 Israelis having been killed. So that is the real huge game changer here. That is why this is such a serious situation. But those pressures, those tensions, as I say, they don't just exist in Gaza as far as the Palestinians are concerned, but in the occupied West Bank, where we've also seen a major rise in tensions in almost daily clashes between uh, is uh, 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 the Israeli military, which mounts regular raids into uh, the main towns in the occupied West Bank, and they're met often with Palestinian fighters who, who, who fire back, who throw rocks, uh, explosive devices. Uh, we've seen several hundred Palestinians, uh, many of them fighters, but some of them civilians killed over the past year and a half and that. So this hasn't come out of nowhere, but the surprise is the way that Hamas executed its attack on Israel. Sebastian, many people uh, have been searching this particular question, and it, and it is, is Palestine, is Gaza an actual country? It, it, it's not officially formally a country as such. I mean, Gaza is part of the Palestinian territories, as, as, as I was just saying, there's, there's Gaza, there's the, there's the occupied West Bank, and there's East uh, Jerusalem and, it, and its surroundings, which is seen as part of the Palestinian territories. Um, the, 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 uh, the Palestinian Authority, the PLO, which uh, is essentially the original uh, real driving force of Palestinian stateship, declared that it was a state many decades ago. And some countries have accepted Palestine as a state, but uh, there are a number of others who haven't, the US being perhaps the main one. Um, so what it has at the moment is that the UN, it has uh, uh, observer status, non-member observer status, which is essentially close to being uh, accepted as a state, but not a state. And we still talk about uh, the peace process that has been going on for years, but has been stalled for a long time now. The main objective through much of that was to create a Palestinian state, the so-called two-state um, solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Another question many people have been asking, Sebastian, is does Hamas represent uh, Palestine? No, it doesn't represent Palestine. I mean, it is one of the two main factions. As I say, it has controlled Gaza since 2007, wholly uh, uh, um, controlled Gaza since then. It won the last elections in the Palestinian territories in 2006. It then fought a battle with Fatah, which is the party uh, that essentially runs uh, uh, the occupied West Bank and it drove them out, so it's been in control since then. It's an Islamist organisation. Its ideology originally comes from a Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. So, I mean, Palestinians themselves 
Uh, many of them are not Muslims. There are Christians, there are other faiths there as well. So it certainly doesn't represent the entirety of the Palestinians by any means. It does represent for a number of Palestinians, not just the Islamist, uh, ideology, which some support, but also the sense of resistance to Israel, seen as the most actively, uh, uh, it, um, it, the most active in that resistance, as we're seeing once again here. The Palestinian Authority, the PLO, Fatah, have moved towards in in the past three decades to essentially accepting Israel's right to exist and no longer confronting it militarily. Hamas has never changed. Uh, from its military stance towards Israel, that it sees Israel as its enemy and it will fight Israel, as we've seen regularly, uh, this being the most extreme example of, the, of the, uh, uh, that, that we've seen so far. Sebastian, another question that is one of the most searched on the internet is who are the Palestinians? Can you explain that with, to us, given obviously there's a very long history, so within the time frame, obviously? Yes, no, there is a long history. I mean, the word Palestine dates back... I mean, at least 2,000 years it was used in Roman times. It was adopted uh, in the early days of Islam. Uh, it was Arabized. There was um, a Palestine existing uh, as, I mean, again, we can't really say as a state, but as a region for a very long time, and people identifying as Palestinians for a very long time. The mandate that existed under the British uh, that came before Israel was established, had its independence in 1948-1949, was known as Palestine. So, I mean, Palestine is very much an accepted uh, way of referring to that region, but there are many problems with that, it, you know, in terms of uh, how large a part of that region is seen as Palestine, who it should belong to, uh, these counter narratives that there are, I, I mean, many uh, Israelis would go back further. They would go back to the biblical uh, denomination of many of those areas, talking of Judea and um, Samaria and other words like that. So, I mean, though historically it is a fact and there's no question about uh, the sense of there being a Palestine and there being a Palestinian people, the actual way in which that's interpreted is still open to question and depending on what perspective people are looking at from so it remains you know a very live debate but certainly for the Palestinians who identify as Palestinians and that's not just in the Palestinian territories but beyond the the, the huge uh, diaspora both in the refugee camps that spread across parts of the Middle East but well beyond that they obviously naturally 100% see themselves as Palestinians even if there is no formal Palestinian state as such at the moment. And Sebastian, finally, one of the biggest uh, or the most asked questions online is who backs Hamas? Well, I mean, financially, one of its main supporters has been uh, Qatar, but Qatar would make a distinction between supporting the people of Gaza, uh, who obviously have faced immense problems economically. Uh, it's one of the poorest areas in the world. Um, they would say that the money that they give through Hamas, because Hamas controls Gaza, is for the people, that it doesn't support necessarily the political uh, uh, um, agenda of Hamas. It doesn't support what Hamas is doing now necessarily. It does believe in um, the Palestinian bid for its own state, uh, for its own identity. It supports that 100%. It does believe that the Palestinians face huge problems, much of them they believe uh, resulting from Israel and its occupation, but it would not say that it directly supports Hamas as an entity. You have other countries, such as Iran, which do openly support Hamas and what it's trying to achieve. And we've seen since this assault uh, happened that Iran has very openly come out and shown its backing and said that it uh, uh, believes that Israel is essentially reaping the wind uh, that it's sown. So, and, and also in in military terms, in the past, maybe not so much now, but a lot of the hardware, a lot of the missiles that, uh, Gaza, that, that Hamas was somehow able to get despite the blockade around uh, uh, Gaza were Iranian made. In more recent years, they've been able to manufacture many of those themselves within Gaza. Syria, again, the, the, the so-called axis of resistance, and then other non-state players, particularly Hezbollah, for example, in Lebanon, which did make a gesture um, by firing some mortars towards Israel, 
in, 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 uh, on, on the second day of this assault, but hasn't so far committed itself uh, beyond that. Lebanon, as a country, supports, again, the right of the Palestinians to resist, to defend themselves, but the government, such as it is in Lebanon, wouldn't go all out in support of Hamas. So there are backers, um, but it's not hugely widespread. I would say the most important would be Iran and Qatar, financially at least. Sebastian, thank you very much indeed. Sebastian Asher there uh, giving a full explanation to all of those questions that you have been uh, searching for online. Uh